Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan Puperi. And to get started learning how to use Python, we're going to first install Python on our Windows PC. And so Windows is very easy uh, to install things, and so we're just going to use the Windows installers on each of the links. So we're going to start on the Canvas homepage. You can see where we have links to install uh, Python, Sigwin, and Sublime Text. So we're going to start by installing Python. Just click on the link. We're going to download Python 3 is the version we want. And so it downloads the file, and we want to go ahead and run it. The one thing you do want to do is add Python 3.6 to your path. That means you'll be able to run Python from everywhere. Python will then start installing. OK, so it takes a while for Python to install, but after it does, you can just hit close, and it's done installing. Great, so now we can test our installation of Python by trying to run it. And so we can run it by running it from the Windows shell. And so if you just look for PowerShell, that's what you want to run. And it will bring up this window shell. And so now you can just type Python and hit Enter. And we can see that Python ran 3.61 installed. And so this is the Python interactive shell. And so it works very much like the MATLAB command window, where we can just type commands like 2 plus 3, and it tells us 5. Uh, we can make set variables. A is 3, B is 6, A plus B. And it gives us the answer. So it executes the commands instantly, again, just like the MATLAB command window does. So to get out of the Python shell, you just have to type exit with parentheses because exit's actually a function. Now we can use this Windows shell, but really I want to teach you guys to be strong engineers. And so strong engineers don't really use the Windows command prompt too much. They would more use something that's more like a Linux or Unix operating environment. So we're going to install one. It's called Sigwin. And so we can close this command shell. And you go back to the Canvas page, and we can click on the SIGWIN. And we're going to download just the 64-bit version. And we'll download. We'll run it. OK, to install SIGWIN, you just hit Next. We want to just install from the internet. Uh, that's fine. We can just install SIGWIN at the C drive. OK, and it's going to just tell where to download. That's fine. Direct connection. And so it just wants us to pick a mirror from where to download. Just pick. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one. And it will start downloading. And so then we'll ask you to select all the packages. We're just going to choose the defaults at this point. So just hit Next. And it's going to say, hey, you got to do this. So we're going to say, OK, hit Next. And then it will start downloading. And this will take a while to download and install them all. OK, so now we have Sigwin installed. We're going to go ahead and create an icon on desktop. We have SIGWIN installed, so now we want to test out things are working. So we open up the SIGWIN terminal. You can see it brings up a window with the prompt. And so we're going to test and see if Python works. So just type Python. And it didn't work. Uh, because the one thing in SIGWIN is you have to use Python minus I in order to bring up interactive mode in Python. So we bring up interactive mode, and now Python runs in interactive mode. You see it's 3.6.1. And so we can do things like we did before, A equals 4, B equals 7, C equals 3. But the problem is interactive mode doesn't really work that well in Python. Because now if I use the up arrow, it doesn't behave how it's supposed to. You can see the arrow is moving around, right? And that's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to let us do previous commands. So we're going to try to exit. And you can even see it gave us an error because it didn't know what was going on. OK, so to contrast that with the Windows shell, if we just run PowerShell, Okay, we can type in Python. It runs in interactive mode. So if I set a couple variables here, if I use the up arrow, you can see it scrolls through previous commands, which is really convenient in Python, because then I could just change a variable name. And so we're not going to be using the interactive shell in SIGWIN very much. If we need the interactive shell, we're going to bring it up in Windows.